the soon-to-be-released Blender brings significant updates aimed at advancing the creative workflow of 3D's artists and animators. Building on its open-source foundation, this version introduces a suite of new tools and enhancements such as the third-generation Grease Pencil, EV Light Linking, Multipass Compositing, and a refined brush system. Each of these features are designed to provide more flexibility and efficiency, but they come with their own set of challenges advantages and considerations. The new Grease Pencil 2 is a major update. It has been rewritten entirely to include features like layer groups and integration with geometry nodes. This change allows artists to transform 2D animations into 3D assets, opening new possibilities for blending traditional 2D animation with 3D elements. This is especially useful for concept artists, animators, and those working in storyboard creation as it allows for a richer, more dynamic integration between drawn elements and 3D environment. The addition of layer groups helps artists manage complex scenes more efficiently, reducing time spent on organizing layers and improving the overall workflow. However, these changes also come with a steeper learning curve. Artists who are accustomed to the previous version of Grease Pencil may find it challenging to adapt to the new methods, especially when working with geometry nodes for procedural adjustment. Another significant challenge is the lack of backwards compatibility. Projects saved in the yet-to-be-released Blender are not usable in older versions. This can complicate collaborative projects or workflows where other team members or clients might still use previous Blender versions. Blender's Grease Pencil stands out in its ability to merge the best of both 2D and 3D worlds, making it a powerful choice for animators looking for flexibility and creative freedom. It is especially valuable for projects that require a blend of 2D drawings within 3D environments, such as mixed media animation or visual effects. However, for artists focused solely on 2D animations, softwares like Toon Boom Harmony offers a more specialized tool set with a professional workflow, while Creator and Clip Studio Paint provide simpler, more intuitive environments for illustrations and light animations. Adobe Animate remains the strong choice for interactive web-based animations. In contrast, Maya's inbuilt 2D tools, including the Blue Pencil plugin, allow for basic drawing and annotations directly on the 3D viewport. These tools are suitable for quick storyboards, sketching, or simple 2D effects if the artist has some drawing skills. They are, however, limited in their ability to integrate with 3D space. Drawings created in Maya lack depth and don't interact with 3D scene lighting or camera movements like Blender's Grease Pencil can. As a result, they are less suited for polished dynamic 2D, 3D hybrid animations. A common workflow for combining the strength of both Maya and Blender involves exporting a 3D scene or animation from Maya into Blender using formats like Alembic. In Blender, artists can use the Grease Pencil to draw detailed 2D animations or effects that integrate with the 3D environment. If desired, these animations can be rendered in Blender or exported as image sequence for further compositing back in Maya or other softwares like After Effects. This allows for a higher level of creative control and visual quality. Utilizing Maya's strong 3D tools alongside Blender's advanced 2D capabilities, all while keeping cost low since Blender is free. This workflow provides a flexible solution for creating complex animations that combine the best aspects of both 2D and 3D worlds. Ultimately, Blender's Grease Pencil is best for those who want to push the boundaries of 2D and 3D animation, making it a great choice for hybrid projects, concept art, and experimental styles. For traditional studio quality 2D animation, other specialized tools like I mentioned before might be more efficient. The yet to be released Blender also introduces new capabilities in the EV rendering engine with the addition of light linking. This feature allows artists to control which object in a scene receives light from specific sources. This offers greater creative control, enabling the creation of stylized lighting effect that breaks free from the constraint of physical accuracy. For artists working on animation and games, this kind of flexibility can be essential for crafting particular moves 
paints or aesthetic styles. Additionally, controlling light interactions can help optimize rendering times by focusing computational resources where they are most needed. Despite these benefits, light linking introduces complexities into the scene setup process. Artists may need to spend more time tweaking parameters to achieve their desired look, which can slow down workflows, especially for those new to this feature. Another potential issue arises when transitioning between EV and Cycles render engines, as the light behavior might not be consistent, making it harder for artists who want to use real-time previews in EV before final renders in Cycles. Another interesting feature is going to be multi-pass compositing in EV, which represents another significant upgrade in the yet-to-be-released Blender. This feature allows users to decompose a render into multiple passes such as shadows, reflections, and ambient occlusions directly within the real-time viewport. This provides artists with more control during the compositing stage, enabling them to fine-tune specific aspects of their render without needing to re-render the entire scene. This is particularly advantageous for artists working on projects where last-minute adjustments are common, as it allows for more efficient iteration. However, this advanced compositing capability can be resource-intensive, especially when working on high-resolution scenes. Artists using less powerful hardware may experience performance bottlenecks, impacting the smoothness of their workflow. Furthermore, multi-pass compositing requires a solid understanding of post-processing techniques, which could present a challenge for users who are less familiar with this aspect of 3D production. Comparing Cycles to Anod, which is the default render engine of Maya, Anod is known for its high-quality photorealistic rendering using ray tracing, making it a top choice for film and high-end visual effects. It provides extremely accurate lighting, shadows, and reflections, ideal for complex cinematic scenes. However, it is slower in rendering and requires a significant investment, making it better suited for professional studios with larger budgets. The choice between these render engines depend on project needs. Anod excels in realism for professional films, EV offers speed for real-time or game-oriented projects, and Cycles provides a cost-effective option for artists seeking high-quality output without breaking the bank. The yet-to-be-released Blender's updated brush system treats brushes as assets, allowing for easier reuse across multiple projects. This change aligns well with the needs of digital sculptors and texture artists, enabling the creation of custom brush libraries that can be shared and standardized across teams. The rewritten brush evaluation system also offers a significant performance boost, promising up to 8 times faster speeds when working with high-resolution models. This makes it a valuable tool for artists who need to create detailed sculpts or texture-large environment. Despite these improvements, there are some challenges with transitioning to the new system. Brush setup in earlier versions of Blender may not import seamlessly, requiring artists to adjust their settings manually. Additionally, while the ability to manage brush as assets introduces more flexibility, it also demands careful organization. Without proper management, brush libraries can become cluttered, leading to slower navigation and potential slowdowns in the assets browser. The new Blender aims to offer a more comprehensive and versatile toolkit for digital artists, but like any significant software update, it requires balancing new capabilities with user accessibility and stability. The beta version release is critical for addressing bugs and refining user experience. While the new feature holds great promise, especially for artists who seek cutting-edge tools for creating expressions, the transition will require users to adapt to new workflows and manage compatibility challenges carefully. Blender's open-source nature and community-driven development remains strong, allowing artists to directly shape the future of the software. As the release date approaches, it will be crucial to see how well these new features integrate into real-world production environment, from small studios to large animation and VFX projects. In comparison, Maya's brush system is more versatile in production pipelines and focuses on procedural effect, painting-based deformations, 
and direct texture painting. While Maya offers sculpting tools through its artisan set, they are not as advanced or user-friendly as blenders for detailed sculpting work. Instead, Maya's strength lies in its paint effect too, which allows artists to create complex procedural strokes on surfaces or in 3D space. This makes it ideal for generating elements like vegetation, hair, or other scene details, giving artists the flexibility to add intricate effect to their models and environment. Also, Maya's brush tools are often used for adjusting geometry, applying textures directly or creating masks, and they are tightly integrated into a broader animation and modeling workflow. Typically, artists use software like ZBrush for in-depth sculpting and then bring that work back into Maya for further refinement, texture application, and animation. This makes Maya a valuable tool for studios where its brushes contribute to a larger pipeline, emphasizing flexibility and integration over sculpting precision. While the new Blender offers a more intuitive solution for sculpting directly, Maya's brush system excels in scenarios where procedural effect and adaptability within complex production workflows are more important. Okay, if you love this video, kindly don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Until my next video, peace.